what they do, the idea is their, their dynamics are the dynamics of the condensate. They describe the dynamics of the condensate and their action will be given by uh, this thing that got introduced before. There'll be a constant f pi squared for x times the trace of d mu of this thing and d mu of e to the minus that thing. So the idea is these condensate dynamics are described by this action which has this uh, a global DF symmetry. It still has this global flavor symmetry because um, this thing here gets a B left, uh, B right, and this gets a B right inverse, B left, and so the trace cancels uh, those things out. Maybe I should put a dagger here. So. So, uh, sorry, yeah. In the vacuum. I mean, it, it's so at low energies, um, because you're coupling left and right, uh, the, uh, the vacuum doesn't retain the entire um, uh, symmetry of the state. But so if you like these low energy states, uh, themselves are this matrix, and uh, I can redefine what I mean by condensate like so. But I can make, and so I have a redefinition of the, just the way I have a redefinition of the cond of the quark flavors like so, I have a redefinition of what these condensates mean, um, because uh, a condensate transforms with a right-handed and a left-handed matrix for one of this and the other of that. And yeah. Have what? Sorry? Yeah. Uh, and F, you mean in the matrix, as opposed to the number of four. There are NF left quarks and NF right quarks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there, sorry. Uh, yeah. If I could have any, uh, yeah, there, I could have any, uh, the trace actually turns out to be irrelevant, but yeah, I got NF and so I've got, so you're talking about this, yeah, I've got NFCs and NF of those, and I can combine them anyway, like, so I can have a U bar D, I can have an F bar U, I can have all of them. Uh, what happens with the trace? The trace, um, turns out not to have any dynamical uh, significance when you put it in. I think uh, you can describe, you could, well, the trace, uh, you could include it, but you can also eliminate it from the series by subtracting out. It's an overall scalar in space, so if you want it, you can have it, uh, but you're not required to have it. So I suppose for the speed. Well, they happen via the blue wall. So, so the theory is there is some uh, they're inter they're exchanging gluons, and the idea is 
it's such a powerful, analogous to the way that nuclei and electrons exchange photons sticking them together, uh, the gluons do this by some uh, not, well, not fully understood mechanism. I mean, gluon exchange is not enough. This is the problem of quark confinement. So what people did phenomenologically is say, okay, we don't know how, we don't exactly know the details of how quarks are confined, but they appear to be confined. So what are all the possible condensates we could make out of a, a quark and a quark pair? So if you like, these are all the possible meson states you can make out of N uh flavors in left and right seconds. And then you leave so so the idea was let's not worry about how this works, let's just say that it works and what would be a good Lagrangian for describing the quark and quark boundaries. That was that's the philosophy behind it. I probably should have said that earlier. Um, uh, to the best of my knowledge, I would say, strictly speaking, the work confinement is still an unsolved problem. We have hints that it ought to work, but I don't know of anything that actually definitively proves it. Uh, there was a lot of effort given to it, and then it sort of decided to other things. But, uh, uh, let Lattice Gates, I guess, work. Um, so the issue, uh, what I wanted to do on this is just mention uh, where the anomaly comes into this thing. So uh, uh, this is not everything. It still needs the anomaly. And uh, the reason is that if you did a, uh, a path integral over the, the uh, action associated with that L and worked out what the effective action was of the, uh, of the gauge field, you would find that it would have this kind of structure that I mentioned last time, that XA acting on this effective action would equal GA acting on uh, the gauge field, and uh, if this is not, if this is not the variation of some local functional, then we have an anomaly. Because if it were, you can show, if this were an equality, you could basically show that this could be reabsorbed into that using counter but if it's not equal to a variation, then you Sorry? Um, it's hypothesized as the action that, uh, where'd it go? It's hypothesized to be the action that associated with these condensates that obeys uh, the criteria that you have the smallest number of derivatives so that you've got the proper low energy physics and that it respects uh, its invariance when you do this. So that's why you need to trace. You've got a B left, B right, B right dagger, uh, B uh, left dagger, and the trace cycles it out. So this was a hypothesis. This is. Uh, this is uh, low, this is uh, the proposed low energy effective action for the condensate. It's not something that is, uh, how shall I say it? It's not something that was uh, mathematically derived from the original action in a direct sense, rather it came from the expectation of the interaction of what goes on here generates this by a sum physics we don't entirely understand, but we'll say once we got this, what is the right way to describe the physics of this structure here? And so they say, well, the simplest thing we can write down is that this is just the derivative of the con I mean, if you look at the definition, this is just the derivative of the condensate times the derivative of the dagger of the condensate. 
energies of good ball it is. So the idea is you condensate this with kinetic energy. Uh, well, um, so how do they, how do these condensates interact with each other? Well, is leading order, uh, uh, we're not going to put in interactions until we understand the leading order, so you can do that. But what are the interactions that had happened come from this? Then you might imagine you want to put others 